Uh, agenda 6.2.9, discussion regarding Kendra's approval. Um, so we, we chatted, I guess, a little bit uh, last meeting just in regards to, um, we've got some rough um, calculations, I guess, as far as the um, cost to reconstruct the pool. Um, we're looking at a little over 630000 is what we've got, or got as far as a rough estimate um, to fix the piping and, and whatnot. Um, potentially it could be more. Uh, we're not sure exactly how much more, but uh, based on what we've got, we've got a pretty firm or rough, I guess, guesstimate uh, moving forward. Um, I'll throw it out there for discussion as far as um, what next steps I guess we want to kind of look at. And um, one of the options definitely is to refurbish. Um, another one is to destroy, and I don't think we need to make that decision today, but it's just to create an awareness and discussion around uh, some of the options that might be available. Councilor McTaggart. Um, the pool's been shut down since uh, June 23rd, 2014, so it's been shut down for two years. And I guess the thought at that time was we were going to shut it down because we were planning on building a new pool. Uh, since then, we've uh, Kind of, we did a pool review, a new outdoor pool that probably cost us four million bucks or in that range, I guess. Uh, and, and a new indoor pool would be eight million bucks. So it's, it's, uh, there's no doubt about it, uh, building brand new is a pretty expensive venture, indoor or outdoor. Uh, we've since then reviewed our five to ten year capital plans, and we talked about that earlier. Waste management facility, lagoon. Uh, we're in the in the uh, engineering stages of that a fire hall down the road, and plus you know a major investment in a pool, and I think it's time to review the refurbishing of the pool option. Uh, we did an in-house estimate at six hundred and thirty thousand uh, bucks. We have in reserves at the end of two thousand and sixteen uh, five hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, dollars town of Kinderslade donated funds plus $72,195.65 of fundraised uh, revenue as well. Um, the, the RM of Kindersley passed a resolution at their last meeting that they would support refurbishing of the pool up to $200,000, or 33%, whichever is lower. So basically the town of Kindersley, uh, including that donation, would end up paying a, a what we're proposing here as a $630,000 budget, the town of Kinnerstay was responsible for $430,000. So we spent $630,000 refurbishing the pool, and I think we'd probably get five to 10 years out of it after that. Uh, there, uh, realistically, I don't think that the town of Kinnerstay is going to be able to afford a new pool for a minimum of five years, and at that time, uh, we still won't be able to afford it unless we get a government grant to go ahead with it. I think that's pretty, you know, pretty uh, self-explanatory, and I think everybody around here realizes the financial position of the town. Uh, I think what uh, I've talked with Councillor Smith about this, what we'd like to propose is uh, starting construction in 2016, finishing in the early spring of 2017, and opening an outdoor pool in the town of Kinnerslay in the spring of 2017 giving uh, over winter time to train lifeguards and, and uh, get things going. So that's the kind of the financial end of it. Of course, with the RM's uh, uh, donation of $200,000 as a max, it makes it certainly a lot easier for the town of Kinnerslake to take a look at this, I would think. Do we have the social license to go ahead and, and do this, which obviously we need. Uh, this will be a community project, I hope. So if we do nothing, there will be no pool from my perspective, for a minimum of five years, and only then if it's supported by government government grants. Uh, during the next five years, if we refurbish this pool, we can take a look at seeing whether or not it is viable to cover it. It may or may not be, but at least it would give us time to, to look into it. We also have a former resident of Kindersley who is a pool builder, a Soren Crack. Uh, I'm not sure some of you may be familiar. He used to run a welding shop in Kinderstay for years. Moved to Kelowna and has been building pools there ever since. He's built 25 commercial pools and numerous uh, private pools over the 13 years that he was in business. And 
him and his uh, friend Jim Massey would like to come back to Kindersley and uh, do something for the town of Kindersley and, and help them refurbish their pool. He's very confident. He did an on-site inspection, as everybody here knows. He's very confident that we can refurbish this pool and we can get it up and going uh, by 2015 or 2017. Sorry. I think it should be a community project, and by that I mean that we put it out, we get Soren in to uh, get the pool up and running. The town of Kinderstay would take care of getting the building going, and uh, we would take advantages of services in kind for, or provided by some of the people in Kinderstay. There's backhoes, there's, there's uh, pickers, there's all kinds of things that can help out as far as that project goes. So I guess the proposal that uh, I would like to put forward too, and, and is supported by Councillor Schmidt, that we approve a $630,000 budget to refurbish the pool. We contact Soren Crack to complete the pool portion of the refurbishment. The, TO, the town of Kinnersley would complete the building portion, which is there's a crack in the wall. We estimated, I think it was around 100 grand or something like that to, to uh, do the building. Uh, yeah, structural repairs, the two walls, 100 grand. And taking care of the asbestos, 25,000. So 150 grand to take care of that. And I think we should set it up as a community participation project to save money uh, on top of that. Um, community projects have been kind of the pillar of, uh, of the Saskatchewan communities for many years. I think we have an opportunity now to take advantage of some expertise that is built into our community a few years ago and would like to come back and, and uh, help us out a bit. And I would leave it to Council to uh, add to that or ask questions. The, the one concern I have off the top, um, Council McTaggart, is that um, we would have to be careful with the RFP process on the dollar amount. It's not if we frame it as a community project that we're, we're getting services in kind from the community. There's lots of communities throughout Saskatchewan that do that. We have community people participate in the project, and so we don't, we wouldn't have to worry about the RFP. Okay. Yeah, I, I just had a few questions and comments. Uh, one was uh, procurement procedures. You know, we, we have limits on tendering and that sort of thing, so we just have a chat about that. I think we should be uh, cognizant of, of new federal government funding that has recently been announced. I guess when we look at our, our waste management, uh, it took a long time, but I think there's going to be some very positive response uh, coming to fulfill some needs there. Uh, concerned about costs, when we say, I, I, I think uh, every project tends to have additions and that sort of thing and I guess how far do we want to go and I guess I look at the donations that have been made to date the people that have raised money was that for refurbishing was that for a new pool and or what commitment was made with the dollars that have been raised so far so I, I understand uh, Councilman Taggart's point of view uh, and I hear those comments loud and clear uh, I got to think on this a little bit. I just want to be very careful about uh, the next thing we spend a million bucks and oh, there's a government grant. We could have got way more of government grant on a new bill as opposed to refurbishment. So I think we want to proceed with caution. As far as the donated money, we wouldn't have to touch that. That'll still be in place. Uh, we have $575,000 as of the end of 2016 of TOK yeah. of taxpayer money put in place. The fundraising money that's 172,000 and change would not be touched. It would still be there for future uh, for future use. Uh, my two concerns. I think you you touched on one, Councillor Johnson, in regards to um, the Bill Canada 150 grant, and that's something that recreation has recently opened up on that that level. Um, I think we would be extremely fortunate to think that we are going to get. Um, two successful bids. Um, as much as it would be nice to, to think that could happen, um, I think the government would pick our priority, and, and definitely the landfill is our priority there. But um, we'll definitely send in the application to Canada to try kind of thing. Uh, my other piece is that um, 
I, I guess I would kind of negate the overexpending. Um, we really built our roads this year and we saved a lot of money because of the economy the way it is and, and we had some really good savings. So um, I would agree with Council McTaggart that if we're going to do something like that, this is probably the time to get savings. Um, having said that, my worry is how long it runs and is it five years, is it three years, is it 15 years, how long does this, this refurbishment last? And that's really a, that's an unknown for me as far as um, do we spend this money now and you know, let's say it lasts eight years and that's really great. Does that dwindle our um, motivation to build that new pool? Um, whereas what's the point of building a new pool because we don't have one? So I, I, I agree, I, I, I think there's lots to consider and um, I sit on the fence at this one, at this point in time until further information, but Councilor Bieber. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I too am sitting on the fence on it, but uh, Councillor McTaggart did bring up some glaring points that, my God, if we don't act on this, we're going to be sitting five years minimum without a pool. Uh, my, my greatest concern is, is that 630 I know I'm talking of the big group of money. Is that enough? Is that going to get us water in a pool? I know there's, there's a, we still haven't itemized or seen all the big or problems yet. True, that's what our estimation is now. Let's hope it stops right there. Right now I'm in favor of it. Let's hope that that's the total. Okay. I think we owe it to our kids in the community to, to give them a pool. And if 600,000, and maybe we can do it less, maybe a little more, but I think we owe it to get a pool going. If nothing else, so we've sat on this for two years and, and we were always hoping that we'd be, have some federal, provincial government money. We realize that it's not there and it's not going to be there for a long time. The general coppers aren't there. I think we owe it to them. I think we have to work it as a community and make it happen. And we do have some participation from the RM, which we need and we can appreciate and take advantage of it now. Anything from yourself? Well, if we can take money that we have today and get it invested into a pool and keep going down the road we have and, and have something for the next five years like that, that's great. But I don't want to. I don't want to have something that ain't worth having either. You know, I don't want to have something that's really twined together because that's just going to cost us more in the long run. I. I I don't know where our next steps are. But what what do we do? So we start out. We agree that it's okay. We're going to take this money. We're going to move forward. Where do we start? Do we start by fixing the pool basin itself and the drain lines. We get them fixed up and cleaned up and, and go from there and see if we run across a larger problem along the way. Or what kind of what are what are the next steps? What do they look like from here if we agree to, to move forward? The way the way that I understand it from talking to uh, Sorn and uh, talking with Tim a little bit as well, like we did the pressure test. I think everybody realized there was leaks. We did a pressure test and you know we were right, there's leaks, there's no doubt about it. So the idea that uh, uh, that Soren has brought uh, forward is that you basically take a cement saw, you cut around the edge of it, you take all the old piping out, you put all new piping in, he feels that the basin is repairable, it needs to be painted, maybe sandblasted, but as far as the basin goes, he feels it's, it's in good shape. You take out all the pipes, insulate them, which will you know give you a better uh, you know heat transfer, you're not losing heat through the ground, plus winterization of the pool will become easier. easier. He said it seems like it's a big job, but he, he said in reality they've done jobs like this many times, and it won't be baler time together. It'll have to match up with any of the codes and or anything like that 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 is out there for pool pools to be. So I am very confident that he has the know-how uh, to come in here and do a professional job at revitalizing that pool. I'm very confident in that. And there's several people in the community that have known Soren over the years. Um, and I think if you found those people and talked to them, they would be very confident as well. The key here, in my mind, 
is community participation. You know, we're going to be cutting cement out, we're going to be digging out cement, we're going to be digging out, uh, you know, old vines and stuff like that. You know, not that everybody needs to show up and look what we have to do, it'll be a coordinated effort. But I'm sure there's people out in the community that would be willing to pull in some of their, maybe a hydro vac or, or something like that and help out, donate some services in kind, which uh, probably would self save us some money. And I agree with Councillor Smith, I think we owe it to the kids in our community to get some type of a pool up and going. And we have the ability to do that and start on it this year. All we have to do is say, let's go. Councilor Johnson. Uh, I'll uh, direct uh, this question to the team of Browns for them. I guess when, when we talk about asbestos removal, is that $25,000 seem like a reasonable price? <clears throat> it's not a bad question. I, I guess to answer your question the best I can, it depends on how much penetration they have to make in the block walls. If it's significant, then that right. dollar value will increase. It's really hard to get a firm price from any abatement firm because you really don't know until you start to get into it. Okay, based on the repair process being recommended by the engineer, there shouldn't be a lot of disturbing of the asbestos, but there will definitely be some. So there's that. Please tell me. Answer part of your question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a tough one. It's a number. No, it, it, it may be plenty or it may not be. No, that's good. Thank you. Councilor Schwing. Whether we take that out today, tomorrow, or 10 years yeah. from today, yes. that cost is to the town. We have to deal with it. If you're refurbishing the existing structure, yes. If you're removing it, then... You still have to deal with it. That's right. But you're dealing with it, if you're removing it, you're replacing it. With it. But you're still dealing with the asbestos at the same cost. It still has to be bagged. It still has to be transported. Council right there. I think it would be unfair to expect council to vote on this tonight. Although... If we had four votes in favor, I'd be more than happy to move on it. But I think the community the community uh, participation in this decision is necessary as well. I'm uh, pretty sure that uh, you know this proposal will come out in the community. There'll probably be a lot of talk over the next couple of weeks about how we should move forward. But I think we should be prepared to make a decision one way or the other at our next meeting. Uh, two weeks is, is more than enough time to have the community talk about it. It's more than enough time to answer your questions, Councillor Johnson, or any other questions here. Uh, we can talk to our neighbours, find out what they think. I'm sure there's going to be a vast uh, difference of opinion here or there. But I think we should put it on our agenda for next week and we should make a decision one way or another. We told the community after we passed our budget that we would, we would come out with some... Uh, uh, pardon me? Public, Public policies regarding some of these big projects. <laughs> this is one we've talked about the lagoon already tonight. The, the waste management facility will be coming up at the end of June. We've talked about that. The fire hall hasn't been talked about, but I'm sure it will be before we're before the end of our term. So these are the stepping stones that we said that we would do, and we're doing them right now. So I would really like to put it on the agenda for next next week. I have them. Uh, I will move it, and Councillor Schmidt, uh, Schmidt will second it for sure, and we'll put it out on the floor. You have a comment, mm -hmm. yeah. So, if, if Council desires, uh, we would be happy to prepare a report that provides options for Council in terms of the pros and cons. There's some things that have been raised uh, in terms of our commitments under the our legal commitments under the New West Trade Partnership. Uh, that speak to procurement. Um, $200,000 for construction, $75,000 for goods, $75,000 for services. Anything that's at those amounts were required by law by the trade agreements to tender. Um, there's things that need to be uh, cons considered and we can provide options reports in terms of the refurbishment option which is sort of an elaboration to the information that uh, has been provided uh, before also in regards to updates on the new Build Canada Fund. So recreation is now part of the new Build Canada Fund in terms of what the funding 
distribution of that uh, will be it's either 25% share of municipality or 17% share of municipality. So these are questions that we didn't know a month and a half ago or two months ago. It's now information that we do know. We did hear specifically from the minister when we met with him at the city mayor's uh, caucus, which our mayor asked that question. Is recreation funding available? A specific question to the pool. And the answer was that this is now eligible. Um, we didn't have that in the old Bill Canada fund that wasn't eligible so the new is so in order for, to help council make an informed decision if council wants we're happy to provide a full options uh, with details report Councilman Taylor. Uh, thank you Mayor Henry I'd be very interested to find out if there's any legal objection to a community in Saskatchewan moving ahead as a community project and any legal obligation that they would have to put it out for tender. It would be very interesting to find out whether we'd be hamstrung like that, but I would really like to find out. Yeah, I think it's less about um, how you define the project. It's more about uh, good services for construction that you're actually doing. And the, so if those are in-kind services that are being provided to us, then obviously it's not. But if we're having to cut a check, for those particular services to any one individual or any one company that we're bound by those trade agreements. So, um, but we can certainly provide that information uh, to council with legal commentary as well from our system. Can I ask through to yourself, Bernie, um, through to Tim, in your dealings and your experience dealing with this, Tim, have you, have you gone through this process where there's been something that not necessarily even a pool, say, but a, an arena or something that has been all kind of on its last legs and looking to refurbish and gone through that process. Would would this be something of recommendation or something that you've gone through and experienced and all turned out? I guess over my career, there's been a number of facilities that I've been involved with that were sort of nearing the end of their life expectancy. And we were able to go in and make some significant improvements to extend the life expectancy. Uh, indoor pool being one, outdoor pool being another, and a couple of different arena uh, facilities and a community hall. So if you're asking me if this is something we should consider, I would say yes. I think um, there's some value in listening to what the public has to say. And the problem you're facing right now is you're going to have a gap between, in a perfect world you have you'd close one facility and open a new one on a perfect world. So right now, we're probably a good three to five years from having a new pool if we do nothing at this point. So I think if the public can provide some input, that may help with your decision making. But it is possible to rally a community around making improvements to a facility to get a longer life expectancy. I'd be cautious that you're not gonna get another 15 or 20 years out of the pool, but I think you'll get, you know, sort of a five to ten. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? I, I don't mind uh, Council McTaggart's suggestion we bring it back to the next meeting. Um, I agree that the public policy statements, it doesn't matter which way we end up going, you're going to have pissed off residents. Um, that's to be an expectation. That's, that's the role we're in, and sometimes there's tough decisions. So. I, I suggest, I guess, we bring it back to the next meeting as far as a, um, a decision going forward. And, and uh, I, I guess, is there any point in having a public consultation? I know we've had a couple in the past as regards to moving forward, and the residents that were at that one was pretty overwhelmingly built indoor, but um, that was one group that was kind of motivated to lead towards that. So and it wasn't, not that it wasn't open to the public, but Definitely, the majority of that smaller group looked at that avenue. But uh, I recall from previous public consultations, there's usually a few key people that come in and speak very loudly, and there's usually another group that comes in and tries to carry the funding towards another project. So I don't know if, if uh, an open community thing is quite what we need, but certainly some sort of avenue to get some public feedback would be valuable. I wonder if there's like a, a comment section that we can set up on our website or something yeah. like that where everybody can at their own time 
you know, kind of as more an individual thing, look at, at giving us some feedback on what they think. So, because sometimes it is in, in front of a large group, it's tough for some residents to stand up and, and share their thoughts or feelings, especially when there's some, some louder members, you know, maybe maybe supporting another of you. Would there, would there be a way to set that up, say, by Wednesday? Some sort of comment box? Do it online survey. Okay. That'll work. Good. Okay, so we'll bring it back uh, in two weeks. Thank you. Did you want to report? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, something with uh, a couple options um, in regards to both, both processes. It's, uh, it's too bad we didn't know that this bilateral agreement would be signed if we were pre approved for something like this. But as far as that building count in the 150 fund, now that it uh, fits in, but that process, according to Minister so he is, we're looking at. Uh, April or March of 2017 that the applications have to be in by. Um, so, I mean, that would be another year and a half away before the application has to be in. That's not even an answer. So. What's next year? Uh, no, March 17? It'd be... The application oh, yes. be March 17. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be a lot of applications for four? They already, they already probably, I can't remember what the numbers were. It was 1.3 billion and they only had a couple hundred million, so, so um, for sure there's there's a lot of projects on the go. And opening up the recreation, you're going to see arenas and everything else from every other community as well. So I don't, I wouldn't have my hopes held high. We'll send it in as part of the process, but if anyone wants to phone their local MLA and put a good plug in, now would be the time. Um, anything else before we move on? No, next agenda item.